Going back to the camp in the evening, the mood grew creepy. Meanwhile, Sepia was extremely aware as she detected a threat from a distance. Until two crimson werewolves came, appearing ravenous and ready to terrorize them. Despite the threat, Junwu tried to meditate. He did his best because that was the best training recommended for him, yet he couldn't move forward. However, he remembered Schubert's advice to relax since he liked overthinking things. But then Junwu had an idea that he wanted to put to the test, where he should cease using the system so much in each combat. However, as Junwu prepares for battle, the werewolf suddenly attacks. He uses his sword with all of his power to slay the werewolf on his own. However, he was only able to skate the werewolf with one slash. Junwu stood uneasily, wondering whether he had made any progress. But, to his astonishment he merely made the werewolf go crazy. Fortunately, Junwu avoided any attacks, but he is still eager to test his idea again without the system's assistance. But before he could get started, his senses were tingling when the second werewolf chose to assist his buddy in attacking him. Fortunately, Junwu had quick reactions and swiftly stopped the werewolf's sharp claws. But no matter how hard he tried, the werewolf was too powerful for him to handle. He was getting a little impatient to utilize the system because it would be done quickly. Despite the struggle, Junwu refused to cheat in the duel and instead chose to unleash his raw powers. However, he hadn't expected it to be that difficult because he was facing two werewolves he couldn't handle. Meanwhile, the girls stayed as bystanders, but Evelyn became concerned and considered assisting Junwu. But, as much as Sepia wanted to help Junwu, she believed in him wholeheartedly. Returning to Junwu versus the werewolves, he was already on the edge of fumbling to the ground. It was as if his small body couldn't sustain the weight of his massive opponent, which kept pushing him backwards. Until things escalated and the werewolf decided to utilize his ability to utterly fumble Junwu on the ground. But, of course, egotistic Junwu refused to fall and give up, as he kicked back his opponent. He was so challenged that he started asking his opponents to take it slowly since he's just one man. However, Junwu sees this genuine conflict as an opportunity to train himself, he began by forgetting that he is merely a guy trapped in the game in order to manifest the power of the sun. As he opened his eyes, he felt full concentration throughout his body. But first, he needed to walk beneath the sunlight, where the power would be easily manifested. Despite being advised not to overthink things, he chose to be clever in terms of being in a combat. He then dashed past the werewolf, just to get some sunlight. Surprisingly, he did not go any further away, instead he decided to simply cut the tree that was blocking the sunshine. Even the werewolf was startled to see him cutting the tree in the midst of their fight. As the trees were sliced in half, the lovely light of the sun appeared. Junwu felt at ease knowing that he would have easy access to his source of power. He had a genuine smile on his face as he placed his favorite sword under the sunlight, which reflected greater light. When he saw his reflection on the blade, he felt completely confident in his ability to fight the werewolves again. He began to smile as his sword became coated with aura, and he felt certain that he could win a difficult battle. But not only did his blade get an aura, but he also became pumped up as he dashed forward in the blink of an eye. Even the werewolf was astonished to witness Junwu go insane with power charged. The werewolf was taken off guard, feeling genuine agony when Junwu cut him with his sword. Meanwhile, Sepia and Evelyn began applauding for Junwu, feeling proud of him for doing his best without cheating. However, Junwu thought that he should likewise quit wielding his sword in the middle of the battle. The werewolf was caught off guard when Junwu dropped his blade in front of him. Meanwhile, Evelyn thought it was a dumb decision for Junwu since the sword was his signature weapon. Sepia became so concerned that she confronted Junwu about his strange decision. But it turns out, Junwu finally manifested the power of the sun throughout his body. He was so prepared to wield his fist without the aid of his sword. He wasted no time as he gut punched his opponent. The once powerful werewolf became inferior at that very moment, as he felt Junwu's agonizing one punch. However, Junwu merged his explosive power with the power of the sun. 
He then snapped his finger, commanding the explosives he placed inside his opponent. With that, an explosion erupted on the battlefield. His explosive powers became so strong that it appeared to be almost burning the entire area. Meanwhile, Sepia and Evelyn couldn't stop admiring the beauty of Junwu's flames. Sepia was speechless as Junwu finally passed Schubert's teachings. Even Junwu was speechless when he finally made it. Following the combat, the system informed Junwu that he had not only fulfilled the Forgotten Swordsman's criteria, but also enhanced Sepia's faith in him. He next checked his statistics, which showed that he had finished the most of his skill evolution skills. However, he still had one more to open, but he felt so confident that he had finally grasped the power he had long desired. But something drew his attention, as he recognized that the power of the sun he manifested was only the tip of the iceberg. He was very unhappy, but he attempted to convince himself that he should be satisfied because he had at least halted the power. Despite his unhappiness, Sepia and Evelyn approached him with a big smile on their faces, and congratulated him on his training accomplishments. He was overjoyed to have his pals at his side, and most importantly, Sepia now trusts him in life-or-death situations. As he asked the girls if their own training was going well, he felt a huge pain in his chest. He wondered if the misery he was experiencing was a result of the power, as he felt something squeezing his heart. And to everyone's shock, Junwu coughed up blood uncontrollably. He lies comatose on the ground, his buddies concerned about his well-being. Meanwhile, somewhere in the chapel, a nun prayed so sincerely. He knelt and prayed for their goddess, and she hoped that her prayers would be heeded in times of need. But then the statue of the goddess appeared in front of her, surrounded by a dazzling light. However, the message relying on her was a one-liner, and the nun was instructed to send a hero. Returning to Junwa's side, he has finally awoken. Sepia and Schubert were relieved to see Junwu doing well when he opened his eyes. Junwu sprang up right away, little embarrassed, and inquired as to how long he had been asleep. He was then told that he had been sleeping for over half a day. Junwu was so ashamed, especially because he had only recently acquired the powers and had been comatose in a minute. Despite the scene he created, Schubert praised him on finally understanding how the power of the sun works. Schubert, on the other hand, told him that he needed to take control of his powers or risk losing his life while using it. However, Junwu emphasized his confidence in becoming more comfortable with the power now that he understood a half of it. Schubert, on the other hand, was dissatisfied with Junwu's arrogance in underestimating the power of the sun and sincerely warned him to be humble simply because he is intelligent. Seeing how serious Schubert was, both Sepia and Junwu got so intimidated, and they kept in mind to be humble at all times. Later on, since the trio had done well in their training, they anticipated Schubert would finally tell them what had transpired in the past. Junwu believed that if he was taught what had happened in the past, he would learn how to use his ability wisely. Schubert was pleased that his students were eager to learn, but first he needed to explain about being the key to their power. But just as he was about to share further secrets, there was an unexpected visitor to their calm camp. The three of them were extremely vigilant, they could sense that something was wrong. But Junwu realized that the visitor was an elder. Schubert's eyes became ruthless as he asked Sepia and Junwu not to leave the room. However, Schubert felt compelled to solve the situation on his own, so he invited his assistant Robert and his pupil Evelyn to join Sepia and Junwu in the room. Everything happened so fast, but Schubert didn't want to waste time by explaining anything while yelling at them. Seeing how furious he was, everyone followed his commands and shut themselves in the room. However, Junwu decided he wanted to observe the crisis and peeked through the door. And all of a sudden, the showdown began abruptly as the entrances exploded. Schubert braced himself as his opponent made such a compelling appearance. Even Junwu and the others in the room were bracing themselves, praying they would not be affected by the explosion. And to everyone's shock, the Inquisitor, Galetto from the tavern, had discovered their camp. He had that ugly sneer on his face, claiming that he didn't mean to rush in. He then arrogantly addressed himself to Schubert, 
asking if Schubert was the owner of the establishment. Even if he seemed to be a good knight, however, Schubert could sense all of his negative energy. But Junwu on the other hand, was taken aback and questioned how Galetto had discovered them. According to Junwu's knowledge of the game, Galetto is one of the five swords of Luna. However, Galetto was such a vicious guy that he never meant to join the Lunas because of his religious beliefs, but rather to combat powerful rivals. Returning to their circumstances, Junwu pondered why Galetto would interrupt on their peaceful night, especially when his alias as Monty had become less famous back in the village. Meanwhile, Evelyn was hot-headed when she confronted Galetto for being overly arrogant and disrespectful to Schubert. But despite her good intentions to defend Schubert, Schubert instructed her to join Sepia and Junwu in their room to hide. But Schubert is such a gentleman that he first thought of chatting civilly with Galetto, explaining that he is only a herbalist that sells medicines. However, Galetto could tell from Schubert's statements that he is more than just a herbalist. He then grinned disgustingly and stated firmly that his goal is to fight people rather than to obtain herbs. Furthermore, Galetto informed Schubert that he could detect some weird powers from him. But not only Schubert, but he could detect Sepia and Junwa's powers from their own rooms. And without hesitation, Galetto launched an attack on Schubert. Schubert was caught off guard, as if he recognized Galetto was his combat match. Galetto wanted to make it obvious that he is not dumb, as he could tell Schubert was nowhere near being human. And just witnessing Schubert struggling, Robert couldn't take the sight of his master being subjugated. However, no matter how determined Robert was, he was unable to withstand Galetto's single punch. Robert braced himself as Galetto's force nearly penetrated his abdominal wall. Meanwhile, another ally decided to be aggressive and help Schubert. Despite being told to stay with Junwu, Evelyn remained ready to fight alongside with Schubert. But Galetto continued to show off his strength as he captured Evelyn's power in his palm like it's nothing. Evelyn on the other hand, was completely taken aback, she could not believe that her magic was completely ineffective. Meanwhile, Galetto was pumped up, he felt like he had hit the jackpot by finding a witch and a vampire in the same room accidentally. But all of a sudden, Schubert decided that it was now time to demonstrate the power of the sun that he possessed. Schubert became the sun, as if his body rejected all science by glowing so brightly. However, Galetto was so taken aback that he felt as if this was the moment he had been waiting for all along, and that is to battle someone on his level. But of course, Galetto refused to let Schubert release his power, as he threw him like trash. Schubert got his body slammed against the wall, struggling to decide whether or not to fight. Even Junwu was compelled to leave the room when he witnessed how badly his mentor was suffering. Schubert, on the other hand, wanted to be a leader and chose to hold back Galetto so that Junwu and the gang could escape. Schubert just smiled reassuringly at Junwu, letting him know that despite his age, he could still fight like a veteran. He just hoped Junwu would put his trust in him, even though the chances of winning were slim. On the other hand, Junwu could tell Schubert saw them as a gem that he couldn't afford to lose. Without hesitation, Junwu turns to Sepia and grabs her out of the room. He then instructed Evelyn to take Robert so that they could all flee, but Evelyn was concerned about Schubert's safety. Junwu then served as their leader, promising that they would discuss Schubert once everyone had escaped. As the conflict between Schubert and Galetto raged on, everyone held each other as they fled. Fortunately, everyone had fled, but the pleasant camp was engulfed by fire even the trees. Even Sepia and Junwu were saddened to see their temporary shelter being destroyed. Junwu then explained to Sepia that the man that haunted their night was Galetto, a famed swordsman of Luna's. However, Sepia hoped that Schubert would be able to hold back the jerk Galetto now that they knew such a formidable opponent was on their heels. Evelyn, on the other hand, felt terrible about her escape and wished she could return inside to rescue Schubert. However, Junwu urged his pals to avoid doing anything risky or they would all be in danger. But for Evelyn, she felt it was unfair that they left Schubert behind to clean up the mess. And because Schubert is still an important person to them, Junwu asked them to remain in the safe zone. And as a leader, 
Junwu offered to be the one to assist Schubert. Going back to the chaos inside, Schubert was being beaten mercilessly. However, Galetto was having a great time bullying the old man, even mocking Schubert about having a strong body. As he continued kicking Schubert's body, he realized that Schubert was only concealing his true power. And because the battle had been so uninteresting, Galetto resolved to end Schubert's life for good. And to his delight, Junwu had arrived right on time. As Galetto looked back, he noticed Junwu standing on the entrance door, appearing like a powerful hero. With a confident look, Junwu challenged Galetto to a duel instead. However, Galetto only sees him as a little brat and instructs him to wait for his turn. But Junwu was determined to convince Galetto that he, too, is a good opponent like Schubert. But despite the determination, Galetto let out a loud laugh, believing Junwu was too full of himself. Given Junwu's determination, Galetto believed he should give him a chance by fully committing to their combat. Schubert however, refused to let Galetto fight Junwu as he was trying to desperately hold him down. Schubert was so desperate that he genuinely asked Junwu to flee in an instant. But Junwu felt Schubert should finally relax after taking on so much force from Galetto. However, Galetto was such a bully that he kicked Schubert so hard in the head. Schubert was once again beaten up as his body was thrown against the wall. Galetto, on the other hand, allowed Junwu to demonstrate his ability so that he could compete with him on equal terms. But for Junwu, he had chills, he was so pleased to finally show off after all of his preparation. And without any hesitation, Junwu hurled a number of blades toward Galetto. However, Galetto felt Junwu's combative movements were too cute for a real fight. But with the use of his bare hands, Galetto was able to dodge and deflect all of the knives. Galetto was pleased since it was now his turn to show off in the fight. However, just as he was about to launch an attack, Junwu manifested his sun power. Galetto felt as if he was going blind as Junwu continued to shine like the sun. And while Galetto was distracted, Junwu saw an opportunity to mount an attack. However, as he continued to sprint, he was surprised by Galetto's fist. Fortunately, Junwu managed to avoid the deadly fist. But then he smirked, revealing that it was all part of his strategy to make Galetto act so recklessly. He then took advantage of his opponent's blind spot by slicing Galetto with his sword. And seeing Junwu's wits, Galetto began to acknowledge his combat abilities. Meanwhile, Junwu was unhappy to find Galetto as a difficult opponent to defeat. Galetto got up as if nothing happened while using his strong chest to avoid Junwu's onslaught. Junwu was becoming frustrated, especially when Galetto was such a cocky guy. However, Junwu revealed that he did not actually manifest the power of the sun. Galetto got so confused when he realized the glowy thing was only a liquid substance from Junwu's inventory. Junwu smirked, knowing that even if he wasn't much stronger, he still had his brain. And all of a sudden, the liquid turns out to be a dangerous chemical, as Galetto feels like a flame was spreading all over his body. Until Galetto loses focus as he realizes the material has spread throughout his body. Meanwhile, Junwu revealed that the oil he used was manufactured by the magicians and was more combustible than regular oil. And by using that much oil, Junwu hoped it would be enough to hold back Galetto. But just as Junwu was about to grab Schubert to flee with him, the vicious Galetto refused to back down. Junwu was caught off guard when Galetto grabbed him aggressively. However, Galetto was pumped up since Junwu had been outsmarting him as a person who's more of a physical fighter. Galetto then unleashes a power of Lunas, as if he had forgotten that Junwu was not his match opponent. And like Schubert, Junwu was beaten up by the arrogant Galetto. Meanwhile, Galetto seemed like an unstoppable fighter, daring Junwu to consistently put up a good show. However, Junwu was simply not at the same level as his opponent as he endured all of the suffering. The system then alerted Junwu that his health points had dropped to 50%, especially after a couple of his ribs were crushed. But in Junwu's mind, he knows he has little chance of winning against Galetto, but he still takes the opportunity because Galetto never kills a player. However, 
There were reviews from players who stated that Galetto was a fearsome opponent who would chase them down simply by gazing at him. However, he never murders, he simply likes a good fight and will let his opponents go if he sees them becoming a stronger individual. And in order to survive, Jun will consider demonstrating the power of the sun so that Galetto would acknowledge him. And as Galetto witnessed him exhibiting his powers, he gave Junwa the opportunity to see his worth. Galetto felt like the true battle had begun, considering how much potential Junwa possesses. Meanwhile, Junwa appeared to be manifesting many qualities and powers he possesses. Even while he needed to demonstrate all of his abilities, he still made sure to maintain good control over them. However, due to his intense concentration, Junwa inadvertently gained a new skill known as the Heaven Piercing Moon Fong. Galetto, on the other hand, appeared to have lost his mind, it was as if he was just a nerd who idolized powerful people. Meanwhile, Junwu ensured that his powers had to influence with his blade before he could use it. And when he released the force, Galetto simply stood there, seeing and feeling the powers for himself. Junwu bled uncontrollably following his attempt to reach his full competence. Despite the anguish, he prayed that his onslaught had some effect on Galetto. However, Galetto appeared to have simply taken in some sunlight as the powers enveloped his body. He remained unscathed after releasing some steam as a result of the attack's pressure. Junwu on the other hand, was simply impressed that his opponent had been influenced by such a small amount of force. Meanwhile, Galetto seemed more disappointed than proud. Junwu waited for Galetto's positive reaction, believing that he would finally be acknowledged and allowed to live his life. But to his surprise, Galetto voiced his sympathy for Junwu like the power he showed was so mid. Even Junwu was stunned, getting shivers from Galetto's statement like this would be his final breath. He felt as if the game had undergone a significant update because Galetto usually becomes pleasant after each fight he has. Until it occurred to Junwu that he may not be acknowledged as a gamer, but rather as a member of their world and an apostle of the sun. Junwu is scared now that he is confident Galetto has decided not to let him live. But all of a sudden, Junwu felt a strange sensation throughout his body. It was as if his blood had a mind of its own as it flowed towards Schubert. Meanwhile, Schubert appeared to be attempting to regain consciousness by drinking his own blood. Schubert's weakened body was gradually regaining its monster abilities. Even Junwu and Galetto were amazed that Schubert could still employ blood magic despite his unresponsive state. As he steadily rose, the environment got extremely heavy. His hands flinched as he absorbed all of the energy in the air. As Schubert stood up, his eyes were filled with fury and vengeance. However, as Schubert begins to morph, it becomes clear that he is not a vampire, but a werewolf. It was as if his body were transforming into a werewolf. His human shape was gone, and he had transformed into a beast capable of killing anyone in sight. However, Schubert does not resemble a typical werewolf because his fur is yellow, as if he were the leader of his kind. Meanwhile, outside the camp, Sepia was getting the chills since she could hear the howlings. Even Evelyn became wary when she realized the howl was so loud and that a bunch of werewolves was likely to approach them. The girls made sure to have each other's backs because they couldn't tell if the werewolves were coming for them. But Evelyn's heightened senses tells her that the wolves are gathering near their location. And exactly as she predicted, there were actual wolves running to their location. It was like they were summoned by their lord as these werewolves rushed like it's urgent. Meanwhile, Galetto was like a sigma, staying unbothered as a pack of wolves approached him. Instead of panicking, Galetto was having the time of his life as he swings his fists to every beast he met. He fought tirelessly with all the wolves who crossed into his path. Junwu, on the other hand, was still hung up on the fact that Schubert turns out to be a lycanthrope, not a vampire after all. And now that he saw how things had gotten out of hand, he understood why Schubert tried so hard not to go crazy. However, even though the wolves are under Schubert's command, Junwu was still considered a target. But poor Junwu couldn't move as quick as he could do to his severe injuries. Fortunately for Junwu, a buddy of his spared him from the wolf's wrath. 
he was surprised to see that the wolf had been struck down by some magic power. It turns out that Evelyn was the one who saved him, as she yells at him to get his act together. Junwo was relieved that his friend still thought of him despite his overconfidence. But then Evelyn cuts to the chase as she instructed Junwo to quickly seize her hand. As she assisted Junwo, she expressed how annoyed she was that the wolves could detect her shadow stealth skill. However, she prefers to use her magical powers on Sepia and Robert so that no wolves could see them as prey. But what's more intriguing for Evelyn was Schubert's strange identity. Junwo then blamed himself, explaining that Schubert had gone mad because of his tasty blood. But when they were attempting to flee, they were caught off guard when werewolves were beaten up in front of them. On the other hand, Galetto felt as if the fight he was having was a party, he was euphoric and joyful. But Galetto felt compelled to finish the several wolves at once. He then kicked his feet, using his might to knock out all of the wolves who intended to jump him. But of course, Galetto wanted his fighting style to be extravagant as he unleashed new abilities. He then punched the ground, causing heavy tremors. The concrete began to fracture as Galetto's aura rose above the ground. And all at once, the werewolves absorbed the hefty blow from the floor. No one was left alive, and it appeared that they had been burned to death as their corpse smoked, its stench filling the air. Galetto, on the other hand, was simply relieved that the werewolves were no longer present. Because Galetto only wanted to fight one guy. He stood there furiously, ready for his final opponent to attack him. Because in front of him stood Schubert, who was ready for round two. But seeing how serious Schubert had become in his wolf form, Galetto realized he shouldn't underestimate his opponent this time. And without wasting any time, Galetto launched a counterattack. He has that strange sneer on his face and murderous eyes as he sprints. As he punched Schubert, he was utterly unfazed unlike before. Their forces collided, and the sight appeared to be like outside of the galaxy. Schubert's claws were able to halt Galetto's deadly fist, indicating that he is no longer the old man he once was. Schubert looked him in the eye, and his eyes revealed that he will not back down in this second round of their fight. As for Galetto, he was just delighted Schubert was finally exhibiting his true colors. But at that point, Galetto was finally shattered. He was startled that Schubert had finally caused him to bleed severely. However, he was such a strange man that despite his grave wounds, he felt compelled to remain cheerful. The night turned spooky as the combat raged on. Galetto on the other hand, was finally experiencing the taste of his own medicine. He was discarded and tossed away like a trash, and was unable to regain control of himself. He slammed himself against the ground, attempting to stand up by gripping the dirt with his fingers. Despite being beaten to a pulp, he managed to smirk as he reflected on how reckless he had been in battling Schubert. Meanwhile, Schubert had gone wild, as if he had forgotten the fundamental concepts of being a fighter. Galetto, on the other hand, made every effort to hold on as Schubert sought to crash his huge body into him. Schubert became so vicious that he used his claws to ruthlessly cut his opponent. However, while being jumped on, Galetto hardened his body like a thick metal. Schubert didn't even consider allowing Galetto a chance to fight back, ensuring that his fist was exclusively in defensive mode. But in a millisecond, Galetto decided to take the risk, even if it meant fighting back and regaining his pride. He steps back, gathering all of his remaining strength. Schubert was surprised as Galetto tackled him to the ground. The table had flipped, and Schubert was now on the ground, being crushed. Galetto smirked, pleased with himself for once again topping the battle. But to his surprise, Schubert was still able to maintain control of himself as he seized Galetto's wrist with ease. And for the first time, Galetto shivered with fear. As he gazed at Schubert, he realized he had triggered the beast in Schubert, and he would no longer be on the same level as him. He felt like his body was immobilized, and he was locked in panic, knowing he had no chance of winning. Schubert stood, rage filling his body as he pushed Galetto to the ground. And finally, Galetto lost consciousness before he could even show off his full ability to Schubert. And just like that, 
Schubert was victorious while Galetto looked pathetic with his crippled body. But despite winning, Schubert couldn't stop his berserking state. He could even sense some fear from his friends given that he couldn't return to normal. He couldn't believe it when his pals started running away from him as they were afraid of getting devoured by him as well. The three of them continued to sprint, no one dared to halt due to fear of becoming like Galetto. Even though all four of them were terrified, Junwo still acknowledged Schubert for revealing the true strength of the seven stars. Looking back at Schubert, Junwo knew that Schubert couldn't afford to go enraged since it would be affected by the sun power. Meanwhile, Evelyn was getting scared to the core since she knew that the four of them will never withstand Schubert. However, Junwoo do understands that fleeing is pointless, especially when Schubert is as fast as a cheetah, but they had to make him control his bloodlust. But all of a sudden, Sepia realized Schubert was acting strangely. As they gazed back, Schubert was trying his best to calm himself in order to avoid harming his loved ones. He then let out a loud roar, imploring with desperation to end his pain. Junwoo on the other hand, became concerned when he learned Schubert was striving to regain his sanity. However, as his adrenaline levels stabilized, Junwoo began to feel the pain caused by his serious injuries. He felt like he was being tortured as his ribs, ankles, and most bones had been fractured. However, his friends were concerned since Junwoo appeared to be refusing to turn his back on Schubert. Sepia felt compelled to confront Junwoo, knowing how reckless he is most of the time. But despite how serious his injuries were, he encouraged his pals to help Schubert recover his normal self. Robert was taken aback and moved to tears for Junwoo and his buddies for being so generous. The girls didn't question Junwoo's decision as they happily joined in on his plan. Even Robert became so passionate that he is willing to do everything for the benefit of his master. Junwoo was overjoyed that, regardless of the circumstances, he had devoted friends by his side. However, their windy night quickly turned damp. Sepia became worried that rain would be a disadvantage for all of them. Especially Junwoo, who knew fighting in the rain would be a bad idea. However, Evelyn's keen senses were once again activated when she detected another intruder in the camp. As they all stared at the shadows, they noticed a man's silhouette in the darkness. It turned out that this man was just Crassus, one of the seven stars. However, because this was their first encounter with Crassus, Evelyn assumed they were going to face a new adversary. But Junwoo immediately knew that in front of them was a very significant person and ally. But then Crassus didn't hesitate to draw his bow weapon. As he leveled his weapon at his dear friend, he seemed to want to put a stop to everyone's problems for good. Meanwhile, Schubert was completely distracted by his horrible demeanor. But then Crassus launched the bow at him with a thunder attribute power. The arrow flew so rapidly that Schubert was taken off guard when he felt a loud thunderclap hit his entire body. Crassus on the other hand, appeared unapologetic from a distance as his thunder struck Schubert. But when they took a closer look, he actually looked genuinely concerned, hoping that his influence had at least assisted Schubert. Meanwhile, Schubert had finally calmed down, and some of his furious expressions were beginning to vanish. And as for his friend, he hoped that his tactics worked for Schubert's well-being. Fortunately, Schubert eventually returns to his human form. He expressed gratitude to Crassus for retaining his sanity. However, Crassus refused to accept that everything was fine, especially after every chaos he had witnessed. And while two of the seven stars were having a reunion, both Sepia and Junwu were so confused. They were completely astonished as Crassus questioned if Junwu was the key to their scheme. But when he gained control of the situation, he suggested everyone to accompany him and go to a nicer spot to discuss serious topics. However, unlike Schubert, Crassus appeared to be more cranky and serious about the power of the sun. He then explained that everyone must go to Volpurgis night, where they will carry out their next plan. Meanwhile, in the Church of Luna. There was a man enraged when he realized that their colleague had been defeated despite their devotion. After all the commotion, they got more interested in Sepia's existence. They were outraged because not only did Sepia escape their grasp, but she is now buddies with Junwoo, 
who murdered their ally. He was so determined to apprehend Sepia that he directed his underling to find her no matter what, before other churches did. Returning to Junwu and his friend's side, Junwu couldn't stop thinking about how Crassus had saved them that night. He suddenly woke up all grumpy, wondering if they were in the location Crassus had promised them. In contrast to his sour mood, Evelyn was there, delighted to inform him that they were in Temberg, where the Valpurgis night is held. Despite how comfortable and light he felt in the space, he imagined HWO cool it was that this was where the seven stars would meet. As Robert helped him sip some water, Junwu hoped to thank Crassus for another time. But he also pondered how long he had been asleep. But when his question was answered that he had been knocked out for two weeks, he nearly choked on his drink. It was like he had experienced deja vu, but this time it was even worse. But for Robert, he emphasized that Junwu's scenario is understandable, especially because he overused his power of the sun and sustained a few injuries all over his body. Despite the shame he felt, he was grateful that Schubert had been recovered rapidly and even considered producing medicine for him when he's injured the most. On the other hand, Evelyn felt she should be recognized for her committed support as well. However, what fascinated him the most was Crassus' existence, as he was known in the game as an elf, the strongest race among all. It turns out that Crassus has a dark past in which he is famed for burning down the world tree, making him an adversary to his own people, much like a vicious villain. He acknowledges that he still had doubts about Crassus, but because of him, it allowed him to see the smiles on his friends' faces again. Junwu simply went with the flow, trusting that everything happened for a reason. However, he became curious since Sepia was nowhere to be seen in the room. Evelyn became anxious, especially because she had no idea where Sepia actually was. She merely stated that Sepia typically leaves early for her training. Out of concern, Junwu employed the system to trace Sepia's location. However, he was taken aback when he saw Sepia had now reached level 150. However, Robert and Evelyn thinks Junwu is being a weirdo, especially given how astonished he appears. But for Junwu, he couldn't believe how strong Sepia had become in just two weeks. And two weeks ago, where the group finally arrived in Temberg. The girls were overjoyed with how lovely the environment was. Evelyn then revealed that the seven stars usually gathered on the entire mountain in the vicinity, and they may now relax in such a safe environment. However, Crassus overheard them and cautioned them not to let their guard down because they had not been summoned to play around. Meanwhile, Sepia appeared uncomfortable, but she made sure to thank Crassus for being a hero the other night. They ultimately had a brief conversation when Crassus discovered Sepia was the girl Rudin was referring about. However, Sepia felt awful about being perceived as the key to their dilemma, especially because Junwu made the sacrifice with every battle. Even though it would appear to be an informal request, Sepia summoned the courage to ask Crassus a favor. She was full of hope as she boldly urged him to train her to be much stronger. But Crassus was a difficult person to talk with given that he was so irritated by Sepia's plea. He even warned her not to set her hopes too high, fearing that no matter how strong they are, they will still be useless. Crassus was such a negative vibe, yet Sepia refused to sit back and relax. She stopped along the way and reminded him that she, too, is an important person. But Sepia also wanted to reassure him that she would never try to decrease his tool. She admits that the power of the sun she possesses has been nothing more than a curse her entire existence, and that someone like Crassus should help her. But then Sepia considered pushing Crassus by questioning whether he was capable of making a human girl strong. To her surprise, Crassus grinned back, strangely admiring her determination. He then requested a favor from Robert and Evelyn before they returned. He trusts the two to return to the site on their own with Junwu. And as for Sepia, he considered commencing their training immediately. Returning to the present, Junwu saw how audacious Sepia could be. Junwu just sat there, listening to Evelyn tell the story of how Crassus forced Sepia to undergo two weeks of intense training. He was overjoyed when he realized Sepia wasn't the same girl who required protection anymore. 
After feeling reassured in Sepia's case, he wondered how far he had progressed with his personal status as well. As expected, the skill evolved as a result of the power of the sun, which he had added to his status window. And to his amazement, he ascended to level 200, which is somewhat higher than Sepius. He was perplexed because he was only achieving average things till he reached level 200. However, when he examined the system's backlog, he discovered that all of his acts had actually been rewarded. However, he worried if Galetto was dead because he was given so many experience points so suddenly. As the scene returned to the camp, the atmosphere became snow-covered. However, Galetto's body remained in the camp, unharmed. But all of a sudden, he awoke from deep sleep, much like Junwu. He struggled to regain control of himself after sleeping too long. But then his vision became clearer as he saw a valuable necklace nearby. He felt as if the saintess was giving him a sign to move forward simply by gazing at the necklace. He conveyed his gratitude and silently prayed for being able to survive. However, the conflict remained vivid for him. He couldn't forget the first time he experienced intense suffering. And how his head was pushed to the ground, leaving him unable to fight back. However, Galetto appears to be a nice sport, particularly after experiencing such a good fight. When he realized he had lost a battle for the first time, he laughed out loud. He wasn't sure where Schubert was, but he hoped that the next time they met, he'd definitely kill Schubert. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to contribute further, you can now buy me a coffee. Every little bit helps in creating more quality content for you. Just click the Buy Me a Coffee link in the description below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video.